Top five, top five, top five. So on top of going back to another video, I'm Strange Wayne. He is Nate. Today we're doing top five dance movies in honor of the newest Magic Mike. The last Mike. I don't know what it's called. Well, there's one more coming out. It's a dance movie. So we're doing dance movies in honor of that. He'll tell you. I think it's literally five. called The Last Dance. Or something. Oh, really? Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. He'll tell you how the top fives work. He's going to start with his five and four. I'll give my five and four. Three, two, three, two. Then we trade off number ones. We also have something called the Zemeckis rule, which just means that we both have the same movie on our list, but one person has it two spots or higher. We don't talk about it till we get to the higher one. Number five for me is going to be the original Suspiria. Suspiria? Suspira. Yeah, whatever it's called. Yeah. It's Italian. I should probably pronounce it correctly, being that I'm a half Italian. Nonetheless, I don't know words. I'm illiterate. Stop being stupid. Anyways, this one made my list because I needed another movie to watch to have five dance movies. And I have this rule. I have to watch the original before I watch the remake. Oddly enough, I only own the remake. But I found the original streaming for free. So I watched it. And it is about witches who run a dance academy. And they just pick off the people they don't really like. But... It actually has a lot of really good tension in it. Hmm. Not a lot of dancing, which is why it was my number five. Because <laughs> for my list, I wanted it to be movies about dancing. He may differ when he speaks. I don't know yet because I don't know what's on his list. But I know what's on mine and my number four is going to be Silver Linings Playbook. Not a lot of dancing, but he comes through for, he learns to dance moves, and he's there for when it counts, and they dance together. And it's a really beautiful, touching, heartwarming moment when they come together and do these dancings. Because not only are they learning each other's bodies by dancing and learning these moves, but they're connecting on a personal level. They're having that trust that neither of these characters have. And there's symbolism behind the dancing, which is why I thought it was appropriate enough to make my list. Uh... And it's got Chris Tucker and Bob De Niro in it. Is this true? That's true. Those people are in that movie. Incredible. Uh, yeah, underrated movie. I like that movie. Very underrated. Um, yeah, I did not say that my movies have to specifically be about dancing. They just had to prominently feature dancing frequently. Uh, that does not mean they're all just pure musicals, because there are plenty of musicals where people sing, but they're not necessarily dancing. So I did make that distinction. But... My number five movie is a movie that is about dancing, and it's Step Up 2, The Streets. All right. You ever seen that? No. Oh, dude. Like... You wanted to watch this? Oh, I watched this movie in theaters when it came out. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you took your girl on a date. Okay, no, no, no. All right, so what happened is, one of my best friends growing up, he lives in Tennessee okay. now, we don't talk that much anymore, but he was dating a girl, and she went to see it with her friends. And she came back to him and was like, you got to go see this movie. It's like so inspirational and like it made me cry and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, hey, like, I know what the story is. I got to I got to go see this movie because my girlfriend's like begging me to see it and I don't want to go see it alone. So will you go see it with me? I was like, yeah, we'll go. Let's go see it. So it wasn't good enough for her to go see it again. I, I don't know, man. I, listen, they did like I don't. These were pri these were private school kids. See, I thought it went like they went and he wanted you to come, and she had a girl for you. Okay, that's no. how I thought it went. No, she went with her friends, told him he needed to see it, and she kept hounding him about seeing it because she was obsessed with it. And then he was like, "Do you want to go see this with me?" And I was like, "Sure, I like movies." Um, so we went to see it. The same girl that did just couldn't go see the movie twice. Uh, was afraid that she was going to get pregnant because they made out in a hot tub. Are you, are you are you serious? And that's it. Like he didn't in the hot tub, which even then you can't get pregnant from that. Hot tubs are very hot. Everything's going to immediately die. Play the clip, editor. Stupid. So, anyways, I went to see the movie with him. I actually really loved it. I don't know that I necessarily found it to be incredibly inspirational the way that she described it, but it is one of those movies where it's like you watch a movie where like everyone in the movie is just incredibly passionate about something 
So like it makes you feel good. Like you don't necessarily want to go out there and learn how to break dance, but like it's really fun watching those people love what they're doing so much. Um Chayan Tatum's on that too, right? Yeah, he is. He's in the first one. You watch the first one? Well, too? okay, to be, or we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Wait, wait, wait. He makes an appearance in this one. So he's the main character in the first one. So he's Maybe the I'm one. getting it mixed up. So he's the one stepping up. Maybe he just shows up in the I don't know. He's he is threads through that franchise. Okay. Um Franchise. There's yeah, there's like three or four. Oofa. Um So, anyways, I really like Step Up. I think it's a lot of fun. And some of the sequences, the way they shoot them, were like really, really well shot and interesting. And they even kind of throw away to like make it like a like a street gang vibe, but like they don't fight with violence. There's like dance offs. So it's like pitch perfecty in that sense, but like, but they take it way more serious. So there's this like whole underground dance competition thing. It's, it's great. Like it's, it's like, it makes no sense, but it is just like an incredibly fun movie to watch. Uh, number four for me falls back into my, this movie isn't necessarily about dancing. It just heavily features it. It was West Side Story, the original. I, the Steven Spielberg one is fine, but <clears throat> West Side Story. So the story about street gangs who, like, also just kind of have dance battles. Um, West Side Story is an all-time movie for me. I think it's an excellent movie. The reason it's my number four under some of these other movies is because the dancing in West Side Story, a lot of it is very modern for the time it came out and, like, slightly interpretive, which sometimes doesn't really translate as well for me and they just look like a little goofy but so it's my number four i thought you'd like the movie a lot more like it'd be higher on your list i figured like two of them would be on your list well like I, was basing, I was literally basing it off of the dancing in the movie alone so not the movie as a whole but like how do i feel about gotcha. the dancing in this movie gotcha my number three is black swan i literally just finished it and maybe because i don't have enough time to process everything because, like, we finished it. You showed it five minutes later. We started doing YouTube shit. But I feel like Darren Aronofsky, all of his films are like, I'm going to take this message, this pure message, and throw a bunch of craziness on screen to make you earn the meaning of it. Mm -mm. And I feel like with Black Swan, there's just too much confusion of her hallucinating. And I understand the, like, you know, like, obsession. Too much of something is never a good thing basically where she comes so obsessed with playing this part getting the part being perfect that it just ruins her fucking life whiplash and you know like I ain't, i'm not gonna ruin the movie maybe you haven't seen it because i haven't seen it until today but it's a weird ass movie and i feel like it steps on its own dick way too much that was like all right so this wasn't real it wasn't real but sooner or later for me personally i'm checking out you know, yeah. it loses its appeal. Yeah. But the performances are great. Mila Kunas, I didn't know she could act that well. Natalie Portman, amazing. If we do a list of Natalie Portman, that's her best performance of all time that I've seen so far. It's debatable! Absolutely love that. You also get beautiful set design, costume design. It's basically Carrie <coughs> with dancing. But, yeah. you seen it? Mm -mm. Surprised. Seems like something up your alley. Yeah. Maybe I'll watch it with my mom. You should not. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of masturbating and, uh, and cooch heating. I, I did know that. No, I was kidding. That's, who, who? No, that's Wolf of Wall Street with Michael. Was that also with Michael? Black Swan. Uh, no, that was a former love interest of mine uh, who watched it with her dad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shouts out Voldemort if you still watch him. <laughs> <laughs> Number two for me is another movie I had. To, bro, most of my list I watched in the last two days. Oh, really? But I'm glad I watched this movie. It was great. I don't really like 80s music, but it was just right. And it's Dirty Dancing. Nobody puts Baby in a fucking corner. Patrick Swayze is fucking great. It stars Patrick Swayze, Jennifer Grey, and... Jennifer Grey's nipples. Because then things are fucking popping out when they do the fucking lake scene. It's like, damn, dog. 
You can't get a pasty. This is like not even PG-13. It's dirty dancing. He almost got poked in the eye. <laughs> but it's just a very fun movie. It's It has that like teen rebellion that coming of age element to the dancing of she wants to branch out and learn this. And Patrick Swayze, he has to do this. Like, this is his dream. This is how he eats. This is how he survives. So they, like, their seriousness is, like, they're both serious about it, but for different reasons. So for that aspect, it's really interesting and compelling. And you can really get wrapped up in their relationship. And her being scared and the trust of the big catch that obviously they do at the end of the movie, and it's very famous. But mm-hmm. I just had a lot of fun with this movie, and the dancing was heavily prioritized. So I had to make my list. And it's on the thumbnail, so you knew it was on one of our list. Not on your list? No, it's not. It was when I was making... Because, again, I had a slightly different criteria. Yeah, uh, If I went by your criteria, it, it so you've seen would it. have been on my list. And I don't know if this is going to be on your list, but Footloose would have also been on my list. I couldn't but, find anywhere to watch Footloose. I love Footloose. The original Footloose. The, the new Footloose. Well, new. It was like 2000s. 11. But, yeah. So that one's also coming up. <clears throat> I couldn't find anywhere to stream. Or Bummer. That's why that's why I had to s- settle for a spirit of the little scary ass. Yeah. Well, it's like Footloose, it has some similar elements in terms of like the rebelliousness. So, do you know the plot of Footloose? Yeah. John Lithgow won't let him dance, so he has to dance in that fucking... Yeah, because Devil's... The dancing is something the devil does that he's a preacher so he like uh, and for some reason the preacher gets to make the rules in this town so like he bans the kids from dancing and uh but yeah it's great i love footloose so campy but like every yeah. movie from that era feels that way now dirty dancing i really like dirty i just dancing. know there's yeah. like that one scene of kevin bacon's in that like broken down warehouse just like getting down yeah um, uh, your uh, three and four. So my number three is La La Land. Uh, it it on there. heavily hark like I mean, just directly pulls from uh, two movies that that are my one and two actually. Uh, like there are some scenes that are like this. They're not ripoffs, but it's like so blatantly influenced. Uh, and I love I love old Hollywood dance movies. This movie is just like it pulls so much from them. It put a modern, uh, like light on it, and it's like it's not just a pure musical. You get a good story along with it, but you also took two people who are not known for their dancing and taught them how to do this shit. And to me, it just works super well. So all of the dance scenes in La La Land, it's not just that they did them; they all have a purpose. So like their first dance on the when they're leaving the party. Or whatever. And it's like, it is literally like, uh, it's a battle. It's a, you can do this, I can do it too. We are equals. I don't need you to want me. I don't want you. But like, I clearly also kind of do. And the dancing like shows that. Um, And then like the jazz club scene, like where he's playing the piano and she's dancing. They're at their high point. It just like, it it shows it just like it, it fits all the dance scenes in La La Land fit so well. Um, and then like the end, like dream sequence where they're like going through the studio and then they go to Paris and like all this, like the, the really fancified version, which is like straight from like, not straight from, but it's like just a different version of the end of the, well, a movie I'm about to talk about. Uh, I love it so much. Yeah, that movie is incredibly important to me. Oh, sorry. I forgot how we do our list. My number two, the so this movie's end scene is the one that La La Land's end scene is essentially in some ways, at least the beginning of it is just a direct extension of and that's Singing in the Rain. Um, ironically, a movie called Singing in the Rain also has a song in it called Gotta Dance. What? Just specifically dance sequences. They're not even singing along with them. Uh, But all of the dancers in this film, incredibly talented, doing their work. Gene Kelly, you know, he's just, he is one of those old Hollywood dance guys. Um, So, yeah. I don't really know that. That kind of, our interruption kind of threw my rhythm off a little bit, to be completely honest. But Seeing My Rain is my number two. And that's that. Yeah. 
so I had this whole bit planned for Dirty Dancing, hmm. and I didn't wear the shirt because you like Jurassic Park. I wore it because it had uh, Wayne Knight's Jurassic Park character on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But Wayne Knight is also in Dirty Dancing, and I was very excited <laughs> to see him in Dirty Dancing. So I was gonna like, this movie has Wayne Knight in it too, and I was gonna put a clip in. And Jerry's like Newman, but then yeah, I forgot it. Mm. I wore the shirt just to remember. It. Bummer, real bummer. Yeah. But my number one is going to be Saturday the Night Fever. This film is incredible. The whole thing. I love the soundtrack. <laughs> I love Danny Zuko's character arc, where him and his punk friends are dancing and he's the best at that style of disco but no one can keep up with him and he wants to win that championship he is like that desire that passion comes off the screen and it's relatable and it's easy to get invested to so what does he do he finds a serious dancer who is a ballet dancer and he's like you know like if you help me like i believe we can win it and the like, story is great but I like everything else about the story just as much. Soundtrack, incredible. The Bee Gees, big fan. And then you got just like a dance movie. And dirty ass New York in the 70s. <laughs> this movie is grimy as shit. It's unapologetic. It's real. It's authentic. And it's just like, there's some scenes that you just like, fucking, you feel gross watching. Because it is a 70s movie. And it doesn't hold any punches. But you have this big light at the end of the tunnel. Danny Zuko, he knows if I can't dance and I can't be the best dancer I can, then I'm just going to be a fucking schluck, a schmuck. I'm just going to work out a fucking hardware store all my life. So I love it for that. It's very... Everything about this film is good. But that character arc of him realizing, hey, I can't be hanging around these fucking losers all my life. I have to, like, if I want my dreams to exist... I have to work harder. I have to sacrifice shit. And I like that about it. And I also like the reference in that 70s show where Red Foreman's going to shoot that commercial and he picks Kelso. And Kelso's like, I'm going to do like a Travolta thing. I stock these chefs. And one day, I'm going to dance around this whole city. Dude, that was like, that's dead on. My favorite scene of all that 70s show. <laughs> it's so good. Because that Travolta impression is very fucking good. Who knew Ashton Kushner had a dead-on Travolta uh, impression? Anybody who's seen that episode of that 70s show. <clears throat> like, when he was doing it backstage, and they were like... Let's write it in. Yeah, put that in the episode. <clears throat> you got this Travolta thing. But yeah, that's my number one. I love it. Nice. Uh, my number one is Top Hat, which uh, very few people know what this movie is. Because it came out in, like, 1939, I think. You're old. So very, very early, uh, really like just after uh, talkies were a thing, right? But it is one of the 10 Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers movies. Uh, this one is, to me, objectively the best of the 10. I love it so much. Uh, plenty of things to say about that movie that I love, but this is a dance movie uh, top five. So the dancing specifically, that dude can just move his fucking feet in ways that should not be humanly possible. Like he can, he can tap, he can ballroom, he can ballet. Like Fred Astaire is just like the most talented on screen dancer of all time. He's absolutely incredible. That boy good. And it's another movie where it's like, He's not just dancing to show off that he can dance, which is something that was really common with these old Hollywood dance movies because dance like that was just a form of entertainment. People would go to a club just to watch people dance because that was what was interesting and fascinating to them. But in this movie, the dancing also connects with what the vibe of the scene is supposed to be doing. If it's supposed to be a push-pull scene between him and Ginger Rogers because... They're having whatever conflict they're having. The dancing reflects that. If it's like a joyous moment, it reflects that. If it's a him trying to work shit out through his head, like he's intentionally working like some stumbling into the dancing to show what his character is going through. Um, and so like to me, it's like it's it is one of the OG dance movies. Uh, um, 
and, in my opinion, the absolute best. And one that more people should go back and watch. Watch old movies. Just because shit is in black and white doesn't mean it's not good. Um, so, that's my number one. Top Hat. Sounds like Fred Astaire was the Bruce Lee of dance. He was the Bruce Lee He was like, dance. I'm going to learn all these styles. Yeah, I mean, yeah, basically. That's what he was good at. But tell us down below in the comment section your top five dance movies of all time. It shouldn't be that hard. I'm just kidding. Someone loves dance movies. You fucking cocksucker, go comb the desert. Where's Flash Dance? Flash Dance. It's about strippers. That one might have made my list. Um, if I've seen it. Nonetheless, tell us your top five. Scroll back up, hit the like button, share the video, and subscribe.